good evening. This um, convenes the July 21st Ethics Board meeting, DeKalb County Ethics Board meeting. Um, it's my hope that this will be a relatively short meeting. I don't think anyone has ever started a meeting that way. It's been a short meeting though, so um, we'll see if we can break that jinx. Um, agenda item, and does everyone have a link to the agenda? Yes, okay. Our first agenda item will be adopting the agenda. Um, I move that we adopt the agenda unamended. Thank you, Candace Walker. And do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Wayman. Um, and uh, in favor, say aye, please. Aye. 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 And then any opposed? then anybody abstaining? All right, so the agenda has been adopted. I now make a, is there a motion to approve the minutes? The minutes were sent out um, last week, plenty of time. Has everyone had a chance to review them? Do, do we need a chance? Okay, I'm seeing Ms. Ali nodding her head. So Ms. Ali, can I get a motion to uh, adopt the minutes? Yes, a motion to adopt the minutes from can last, I uh, last month. Yes. Second. Thank you, Ms. Wayman. And then all in favor of adopting the minutes? Aye. 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 And then any opposed? And then any abstaining? All right, the minutes have been adopted. So now we're turning to the substantive portion of our agenda, um, uh, which is the first one is the swearing in of board members. Um, both Ms. Wiley and Ms. Kalberman were in favor of a swearing in board members. Um, they agreed that this was best practice. At this time, um, I recommend that we table this item because frankly, there is no reason for us to go forward with, you know, what is a ceremonial swearing in? We're all acting as board members while we still don't have an ethics officer. And I just want to draw attention to the fact that without an ethics officer, this board is, is basically non-functional. It is a ship without a captain. I wanted to leave the swearing in on the agenda, though, because I do want to draw attention to the fact that without an ethics officer, um, I think that this is a non-functional board, not non-functional because we don't want to work, but non-functional because we lack the capacity to investigate our cases um, and to train the employees of DeKalb County. So. Um, that is my position that I think we should table this. Um, I just want to open it up for discussion. So does anyone have any opinions about the swearing in of the ethics officers? Of the additional board members you're saying? Yes, yeah, sorry, of board members. I know at the end I said ethics officers. So the swearing in of board members. I am fine with your recommendation to table it at this time based on the reasonings that you have provided. So that that's all I have to offer at this time. I feel the same way. It's it's okay to wait. If, uh, and plus, I think maybe one of them are not here currently right now. So it would be okay with me. Right. And I will say, and this is the optimist in me talking, my hope is that we can all get sworn in when we have a new ethics officer in place and maybe she can get sworn in at the same time. So, mm -hmm. um, so uh, do I hear a motion to table this agenda item? So move. Thank you, Ms. Wayman. Um, mm -hmm. do I hear a second. Thank you, Ms. Rogers. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And then all opposed? And then any abstaining. All right. Um, so that item, which is the first substantive agenda item, has been tabled until we have an ethics officer in place. The second item um, is the proposed informal advice on the ethics code lines 336 and 337, or three, 336, 337. Um, and then Agenda item 3C is an update on the newly hired ethics officer. I will say that I'm going to sort of combine those two topics in my discussion. So the ethics, so first I would like to say that we discussed this at our last meeting 
but that since our last meeting, which was last month, there had the commissioners have still refused to confirm our ethics officer. And the reason that has been communicated to us is because a perceived conflict of interest as several commissioners have pending cases before the ethics board. It's not all commissioners, but it's enough to be a quorum. And it's also worth noting that the commissioners have not asked for an advisory opinion, a formal advisory opinion. So in the absence of them asking for a formal advisory opinion, and then in the it, it being our understanding through informal channels that their concern is about a perceived conflict of interest, the recommendation that I have is for the board to issue informal advice. So rule three of the ethic code allows us to issue informal advice. So that is where our ability to do that stems from. The informal advice that I recommend that we issue is that it is not a conflict of interest for the commissioners to vote on our ethics board officers. And it's not a conflict of interest for three reasons. First, it is the board that acts as the judge and the jury in ethics cases. So their reasoning seems to be, we cannot vote on someone who can find us guilty or rule on ethics cases. That is simply not what the ethics officer does. The ethics officer is a neutral party who investigates ethics claims, brings the evidence in front of us, and we are in fact the ones that we're the decider, we're the ultimate decider. So it's a misunderstanding of the role of the ethics officer first. That's why there's not a conflict. The second reason there's not a conflict is that the code itself instructs the commissioners to vote to, to confirm our pick for ethics officers. And the code was written contemplating this very in this very situation of there being a conflict of interest. So the, the fact that the code instructs them to do it means that that is their role in this in this um, situation. But also the code contemplated as conflict of interest and would not have been written to allow them to vote to confirm if such a conflict um, existed. And then finally, if the conflict of interest were to exist, which prevents them from voting on our ethics officer, that would mean that basically the entire ethics board falls apart, which is what I've been saying from the beginning, which is if they choose not to vote on an ethics officer, they are depriving us of the ability to function. And as the board is aware, and I believe members of the public are aware, Senator Manuel Jones um, wrote a letter to the commissioners, which was dated July 7th of 2022. And in his letter, he confirmed that the commissioner's confirmation vote was never meant to control or to erode the power of the ethics board or to prevent the ethics board from functioning. Um, by not voting to confirm, even if it's not their intention, the outcome is to prevent the ethics board from functioning. Um, and the ethics board, as uh, Senator Jones states in his letter, is in fact a check on the power of the commissioners. So by stating that there's a conflict of interest, they're removing this check on them. And that simply is not allowed. They're not allowed to remove a watchdog organization um, that has the ability to act as a check on them. So for those three reasons, one, the ethics officer is not the judge and jury we are. Two, the code instructs them to confirm ethics officers. And three, to not do so would dismantle the board. Um, it is my recommendation that we issue the informal advice that it is not a conflict of interest for them to vote on our ethics officer. And I know that I've been talking a long time, but I wanna give one more piece of information before we have the vote, which is, Today at approximately two o'clock, three commissioners met with our candidate, our top choice for the ethics officer, Judge Murphy. They interviewed her for approximately 30 minutes and they voted to vote on her confirmation at the next meeting, which is on Tuesday. So they have placed the vote back on the agenda. We believe that that means she is going to be confirmed. It is certainly a vote or step in the right direction. And frankly, Ms. Murphy, as we all know, is a phenomenally strong candidate. So I think by meeting her today, they were extremely favorably impressed. So 
we are issue is my recommendation that we issue this informal advice, but I do want to be clear that at the last meeting, I was very do or die. Nothing is happening. Things have gone off the rails. We are now seeing a silver lining and it seems like things are moving in the right direction. So I just want the board to be aware of that and members of the public to be aware of that before we take this vote. So I wanna make sure that we get the language correct here. Do I have a motion? Well, first of all, let us let me make sure that there's discussion. Um, does anyone have any questions or concerns? Um, yes, Bill. I have a question. I, I just, uh, not a question or a concern. I, I completely agree with your approach, Alex. Uh, I just want to uh, commend uh, the commissioners uh, who met with the uh, the operations committee today, clearly somebody at the commission now, those three particularly have done their homework as we did a couple of months ago. They have looked into Judge Murphy's qualifications and found her not only to be a delightful person, but very well qualified for the position. And uh, they had a great conversation with her, a great interview. And I hope that they will impress upon the rest of their colleagues on the board uh, next Tuesday uh, to finally give her the approval of our nomination uh, so that we can get about the work of DeKalb County as its ethics board. But um, I agree with you. I have the same consternation over their delay uh, in, in taking action, um, but I, 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 uh, I definitely wanted to commend the three commissioners, uh, Marita Johnson, Robert Patrick, and Steve Bradshaw, who met uh, as that uh, committee today, and as, as, as I said, have clearly done their homework uh, and are supportive of our candidate. And so I just wanted to make sure that folks knew that that committee, the commission's committee is now doing their work. Hopefully the rest of the commission will do its work between now and Tuesday and approve Judge Murphy. And then there was another comment. Mr. Moskowitz. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna take anything for granted here. Um, I know it was a big step today. It took forever to get to this point. I just hope that uh, the rest of the commission will take heed of what their subcommittee advised and will approve this. We've been wrestling with it for five months. It's time for this to end and uh, hopefully uh, they will move forward with the approval of Ms. Murphy and um, that's just, I'm not gonna take anything for granted till I see it, so. Right, and in the spirit of not taking it for granted, that's why I think it's still important to issue the informal advice. And I also think if the situation were to arise again, although it's my hope Ms. Murphy is with us for a long time, I want the informal advice to be on the record so that this issue is addressed and maybe finalized. So the motion, um, the language that I would recommend is a motion for the reasons discussed, it is our opinion that ethics code lines 336 and 337 should not be interpreted in a manner such that the commissioner's vote to confirm the appointed ethics officer candidate could constitute a violation of the ethics code merely because complaints are currently pending against the commissioners. I, I uh, move a motion uh, for us to vote on that. Thank you. And do I have a second? Thank you, Ms. Ali. Oh, no. I'll second it. Thank you, Ms. Roswitz. And then all in favor, um, please say aye. 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 Okay, great. Nice. great. And then any opposed? And then any abstaining? Wonderful. So we will be issuing that informal advice. Um, to the uh, commissioners. And I have copy and pasted the language in the chat, just if anyone wants to review it. Um, turning to our next, oh, and so the, our next agenda item was an update on uh, Judge Murphy's candidacy. And so that is our update on her candidacy. Our next, we are, first of all, we're moving very quickly, which I am always in favor of. So I don't have any other updates on Ms. Murphy's candidacy at this time, other than once she is voted to confirm, we look forward to welcoming her as our ethics officer and to get back to business. Our next item um, does involve uh, a complaint against Commissioner Rader. Let me pull up that item. So this is about the Robert Buckler versus Jeff Rader and Kathy Gannon case. 
which is case number 2017-24. This is a case that is pending currently on the ethics board's docket. Um, it is, yes, Bill. Ms. Madam Mr. Chair, um, for reasons previously stated, uh, I need to recuse myself from this discussion in this matter. So I will step aside and ask one of you to notify me when y'all have completed this matter this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and um, so we will talk about that now at this time. So that case is currently pending on our docket. It's an open case. It involves a sitting commissioner. It is not the only case that involves a sitting commissioner, and it's not the only case that involves Commissioner Rader, just to be clear up front. Um, an attorney reached out to us and expressed the fact that it was his belief that the statute of limitations has run on that case. We reviewed that case, and under Rule 2.2, it allows the board um, 2.2 of the ethics code allows the board to vote to administratively close this case due to 90 days of inaction. Once again, um, this is a natural consequence of not having an ethics officer. Uh, the truth is, I don't know a lot about this case. I don't even know if, um, I, I don't know a lot about this case, or maybe I, I know enough, but the point is that this is what happens when there aren't ethics officers. The cases are brought in front of us. And I will say I used to be a prosecutor and this happened with criminal cases too, which is if a prosecutor had a huge docket, even if it was a meritorious case or wasn't a meritorious case, they just get dismissed under a statute of limitations. So I do just wanna be clear that we are taking this action. We're being forced to take this action, I believe, because we don't have an ethics officer. Um, and I, so it's gonna be my recommendation that based on rule 2.2, we do vote to administratively close this case. Closing this case removes a potential conflict of interest. And I, it, I wanna be clear, I don't believe the conflict of interest exists, but arguably that Rader believes the conflict of interest exists. However, he still has another case pending. So this does not eliminate that concern for him, but I wanna be clear about an unintended consequence of voting to administratively close this case. So um, I want to hear any question about administratively closing um, this Buckler versus Raider and Ken case, which again was case number 2017-24. I just want to make sure that I heard you correctly. You said unintended concept. Can you just repeat the last part of what you said? I, I didn't quite. I think it's, I might have said unintended, con but to me it's a natural consequence, which is if you don't have an ethics officer, which impedes the ability of the board to function, that means cases are going to get dusty, they're going to sit on the shelf, and we're going to have to administratively close some of them. And my point is, I'm not weighing in on the merits of this case. I'm not saying it deserves to be closed or doesn't. In fact, what I'm saying is that it's just sat around too long. And that's why statute of limitations exist. Uh, people who are accused of ethics violations, they have rights to, they are citizens of DeKalb County or their employees or their elected officials, and they have the right to not have a case sit around and hang over them for years on end. And so this attorney called us and said, please look into it. We believe that this case has sat inactive for 90 days. We did look into it, and this case has sat in inactive for 90 days. It is my belief that if we had an ethics officer in place, and we have not had an ethics officer in place since February, this would not have happened. So. I want to be clear that I think it's a natural consequence of not having an ethics officer that we now are being asked to administratively close this case. Okay, thank uh, you. I have a I had a comment about it uh, or or a question really. Does that mean that uh, Mr. Buckler cannot refile the complaint if we dismiss it? Um that is a that question I don't know the answer to, and I just don't have the answer to that question. I think that generally speaking, anyone at any time can actually refile a complaint, and then we look at the various merits of the complaint. So there's nothing stopping him from refiling it. Frankly, if someone wanted to, they could file hundreds of complaints. I hesitate to say that out loud, but this specific case will be closed. And so the the only context I have is that in the commissioners feel like they have conflict of interest with having open case, at least this open case will no longer exist. Yes, Mr. Moskowitz. My comment. 
just for clarity's sake, um, and I, I don't want to rehash old news, but I think we had already taken this prior action, and there was some. Inter if we go back to, to back to the beginning of the year, um, and we had already voted on this dismissal with certain stipulations. However, there was some confusion on that matter, and the certain stipulations did not occur. I think that you're completely on point that at this date, this thing needs to be dismissed. Um, I, I don't think that um, the issue that was before the board um, is, is not something that cannot reoccur. And I don't mean specifically this case, but in general, it's never really been answered, but I think we're rehashing some old territory that no longer, um, I think we are governed by a statute. I think the, the attorney's exactly right. And, and it needs to be dismissed. And uh, I have no problem with that, but I, I just want to tell you, I think we've already done this on one earlier occasion and <laughs> just going back over it, maybe for insurance purposes, I don't know, because the decision we made languished and to be quite honest with whoever is listening to this, it's because Ms. Kalberman in her last action made this recommendation with the stipulations. She left, we did not have an ethics officer and what she recommended got completely turned around. And since we've had no one guiding this ship since February of 2022, this is another casualty of what's been lay, laying around so um without going all the way around the house to come back to the front door um let me just say this um i i fully agree with the recommendation so can i do i hear a motion to administratively close the buckler versus jeff rader and kathy gannon case so moved. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. And then all in favor, please say aye. 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 All in, um, all opposed. And then let the record reflect that um, Bill Clark, he is an alternate, but he recused himself from the discussion as well. Any other recusals? All right. And then that case will be administratively closed. Um, at this time, we have moved through the agenda. Um, we are going to now hear public comment comments before our executive session, um, before we open the floodgates to public comments. I would just like to say that our executive session is going to focus on hearing from our legal counsel, um, and all of our discussions are going to um, deal with litigation matters that affect the board not ethics complaints and not um, the, the operations of the ethics board. So I just wanted to state what the executive session is going to be about uh, in case anyone has any public comments regarding that. I think we are now ready for public comments. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, so if you would like to uh, provide public comment to the Ethics Board this evening, please identify by using the raise hand feature or pound two if you are on a phone. Please keep your comments to less than three minutes if possible. And of course, no derogatory uh, or disparaging remarks, please. So our first request is from Mary Hinkle. I will ask Mary to unmute if she would uh, please state her name and address for the record. Yes, Mary Hinkle, 1718 Mason Mill Road, Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you, board members. Representatives from DeKalb Citizens Advocacy Council will speak at the Board of Commissioners meeting on Tuesday to encourage them to confirm Judge Murphy. I know this matter has been frustrating to you, but thank you for your steadfast commitment to serve. The citizens of DeKalb County and its employees deserve a functioning board of ethics and you are making it possible. Thank you. And thank you very much for your comments. Give me one moment. Our next request is from Stephen Binney. I will ask Mr. Binney to unmute if you would like to, uh, please state your name and address for the record. 
Stephen Benny, uh, 1083 Seville Drive, Clarkston, Georgia, 30021. Uh, Ms. Joseph, you've done a tremendous job in forcing the commission to actually take action on instilling an ethics officer. I watched the meeting this afternoon and you have, and even though Mr. Bradshaw and um, Ms. Uh, Davis Johnson have current cases before they voted to recommend approval, there were two other commissioners also at the meeting, Mr. Perry and Ms. Cochran Johnson, and they also voiced approval for your nomination. So I believe but I want to be like Mr. Mockowitz. I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, but I believe that um, the judge will be approved on Tuesday. But I do want to point out that I believe the next step is to also have it approved by CEO Michael Thurman. And CEO Michael Thurman does not have a pristine reputation when it comes to approving people uh, on a quick basis or nominating people on a quick basis. So I would keep an eye on that and you may have to prod him a little bit in order to actually get an ethics officer. Uh, I am very proud of what you have done over the last few months and please keep up the good work. I do have a question about the uh, Mater and Gannon case. Does, when you say 90 days, does does this mean that we have no active cases? Because every case is, is longer than 90 days uh, that is currently before the ethics board. We haven't had a functioning prose prosecution in, of, of cases for three or four years because of the Supreme Court. And when situations like this happen, does that mean that justice is not done? Because we've been in spaces for four years. Yeah, uh, I, I'm very disappointed with that, but thank you for your time. Thank you. I would like to, to clarify because that's an excellent question. The uh, case that was administratively closed tonight was the only case that was in the advisory opinion stage. So it's the only one that rule 2.2 applied to. So I do wanna make that clear. The other cases are therefore the time has not lapsed. Um, and I want to address the second portion of that, which is, does that mean that justi justice wasn't done? I'm not going to answer that in regards to this very specific case, but in general, when the statute of limitations run in cases, it frequently can mean that justice isn't done. And that's something when I was a prosecutor that happened all the time. And statutes of limitations exist in order to make sure that people that are accused of whether it's crimes or ethics violations, they're not um, followed by the shadow of the accusation but it also can lead to unjust results. And again, that means that cases have to be worked, work has to be done. And so it is not shameful that this one case was closed, but we're on the precipice of that because we haven't been a functional board for so long. So you're right to have that concern. I'm sorry, I know I cut off public comments. So do we have more public comments? Well, let me, there were no further hands, but let me just make one uh, last ask. If you would like to make public comment, uh, please use the raise hand feature or pound two. And there are no additional hands at this time, Madam Chair. We are about to go into executive session. Um, thank you, everybody, members of the public that attended. I will just briefly say that in serving on this board, one of the uh, greatest joys and frustrations has been getting to hear from so many people, whether it's elected officials, citizens of DeKalb, concerned citizens. I put my cell phone in the chat. Um, I don't want to, I don't want only people that happen to know me or happen to reach out by email to feel like they have access to me. And so if you have questions or comments, please always feel free to call me or text me or schedule a time to chat. Um, I really welcome input, input into this board. And I'm aware of the fact that this board has not always been the best. And I'm also aware of the fact that people are frequently very depressed about DeKalb County or they're, they're pessimistic. And I really think that we have the opportunity to build something great here. And I hope that we can sort of forge some optimism together. And so I really, I really, really welcome input. And I really think we can forge a new board that does really wonderful work in DeKalb County because I really believe in this community. So I just wanted to make that very strange pitch. Sorry. 
And Madam Chair, I'm sorry, before you do go into executive session, I believe Mr. Ray Johnson uh, may have uh, not had the ability to, I, I think he got his hand raised late. If, if you're okay with it, I'd like to recognize him, but again, of course I, I defer to you. I can't make a speech about welcoming input and then say no. So yes, I welcome his input or her. All right, uh, Mr. Johnson, um, it looks like you've got, you're on twice. Could you raise your hand one more time? I'll, I'll select the right one. Well, I'll just, Let's see, hang on a second. That is very odd for some reason. All right, give me one second. My apologies. I Something has happened here and I'm not giving him the ability to, to speak. So I realized uh, I hadn't shared my cell phone with everyone. So I've now put my cell phone in the chat. And then earlier I said that I put the informal advice in the chat and now I'm putting in the chat for everyone. All right, Mr. Johnson, I, I, for some reason I have to promote you to panelists. I have no idea why, but if you go ahead and accept, um, you should be able to uh, then give your public comment. All right, give me one moment and I'll get you going here. All right, it looks like you're in Mr. Johnson, but I'm not seeing audio for you. So let me try your other account that you're in with and I'll promote that one to panelists as well. I don't know why you have two. All right, looks like he's coming in on the other one. Still not seeing any audio though. All right, well, my apologies. I don't know why I'm not seeing, oh, well, here's here now, I'll, I do see one with audio. So I am asking you to unmute uh, Mr. Johnson. If you are seeing that, please accept. And please state your name and address for the record. My name is Ray Johnson, I live at 20, 2546 Wilson Woods Drive, Indicator. I've been involved with the ethics board for quite some time, I've actually won a couple of cases before the ethics board, which is uh, which is pretty remarkable. And uh, would like the board and the public to understand that this is the fourth ethics board under the uh, ethics law HB 590 that was passed in 1990. Now, all the subsequent laws, ethics laws that have been passed for DeKalb County are amendments to that original law. And DeKalb County has the dubious distinction of being the only county out of 159 counties to require a state law to create its ethics board. Everyone else gets along just fine. Other 158 counties and some 500 municipalities get along just fine with an ordinance to create their ethics boards but not DeKalb County. And the reason for that is that DeKalb County has a very, very long history of corruption. If, if you'll recall, one of the uh, recent CEOs had to leave public life because supposedly he for forged a check, a $4,000 check. Another previous CEO had to serve a year in prison for shaking down county contractors. And, and there are numerous uh, other examples. I do have one case that I particularly, that I still have filed from, from 2014. It's a case uh, concerning Sharon Barn Sutton. Her trial is next, next month. And I would like to, I would like the board to consider that case, do an investigation and take the appropriate action. I, I do not want to see that case dismissed as the board has dismissed so many other cases. And I thank you very much for your service. That's all. And thank you very much for your comments. Uh, at this time, that does exhaust the uh, request for public comment. 
So back Thank to you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Do we have to vote to go into executive session? All right. Do I hear a vote to go into executive session? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Wayman. Second. Thank you, Ms. Ali. Um, all in favor of going to executive session, can I get an aye? Aye. Aye. And then any opposed? And then any abstaining? All right, we will now log off of this link and then log on to the executive session link. And thank you everyone for your public comment. motion to adjourn the executive session. Motion to adjourn the executive session. Thank you, Ms. Second. Ali. Thank you, Ms. Wayman. And then all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? All right, so executive session is adjourned. Is there a motion to approve the executive session affidavit? And as stated before we went into executive session, the, ex the purpose of the executive session was to receive legal advice from our attorney regarding litigation matters concerning the board. Is there a motion to approve the executive session affidavit? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Wayman. Is there a second? Second. Thank, thank you, Ms. Ali. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then any opposed? And then is anyone abstaining? And I, I can't hear David Moskowitz, but he did abstain or he did um, recuse himself from the executive session. And so he's abstaining from this vote. Um, and our, so I think that that concludes our meeting. Our next meeting will be, Kristen, sorry, what is our next meeting? It's in August. I'm sorry, it's August 18th. All right, our next meeting will be August 18th. And as stated previously, it's our understanding that the commissioners will be voting to confirm our ethics officer on Tuesday. So please look out for that. And then as Mr. Binney um, commented, we do still need the CEO to sign off on that. So we are aware of that. Um, that is it for today. And thank you so much, everyone. I'm sorry, Alex, I'm sorry. did we vote to approve the um, executive session affidavit? We did. Okay, That's a, go ahead. All right. Thank you. Um, so do we have to vote to adjourn? Yes. Okay. Vote to adjourn. Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Rodney. Second. Second. Thank you, uh, Ms. Ali. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay, great. I think I heard John vote on that one. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> anyone opposed? No? All right. Um, and anybody abstain? All right. Thank you. We're now adjourned and I will see you next month. And I appreciate everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm.